Thank you, Mandel. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I have six thirty. Call to meet meeting number eighteen forty five to order. The Swings are planning and zoning commission, February twenty eighth at six thirty. We have a quorum. We have three regular members here. Under added agenda items, we're going to add PZ 2023-05 for a site plan modification. Under new business, we're going to review it there. There is no legal notices for tonight's meeting. Public participation. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to comment on anything that's not on tonight's agenda? Or anyone online that would like to comment on something that's not on tonight's agenda? Okay, moving right along, we're going to go to approval of minutes, February 14th, 2023. Does anybody have any additions, changes, or modifications? No, sir. I think if you could look on at line 232, it says, speaking of the business work, I think you need to add after speaking, maybe in favor of the business work. Um, yep. Anything else here? That's it. Okay. So then I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of regular meeting 1844 which was held Tuesday, February 14th, 2023, um, at, with the modification in line 232, after the word speaking, insert in favor, before the word of. There's a motion on the table. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Mm -hmm. okay. We have no not received applications, nothing under performance bonds, actions, permit extensions, and motive acceptance. Continued public hearing. We have a request to table it until the meeting of March 14th for PC 2023 2. We do not have any new public hearings, no old business. So under new business, we will discuss PZ 2023-05. Okay. So we're gonna receive it in here, okay. So this is for site plan modification. Uh, 27 Reservoir Ave in Broadbrook. Who is here to speak on behalf of this application? It's I, Joe Schallerhofer. Hi, Peg. Nice color pictures. Oh boy. Full set of plans if anybody wants to see the full set. Richard Frank was here, so he would want to see. <laughs> um, we're simply removing the softball field 
and installing a playground. And with that access, because it's going to be an ADA playground access coming up with the driveway and then sidewalk connected, sidewalk connected pavilion. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a, you know, it's flat, obviously it's flat up there because it was a softball field. And we're doing a little bit of drainage modification on the drainage to do some under drains underneath the sidewalk. It, or the sidewalk, the playscape, and it's a little, it is a little damp up there. There is a, a mystery of a clay layer. I believe that it's from when they dug the pond, they brought all the material up, spread it out, and leveled it. Yeah, so it traps the water a little bit. Uh, plus, it leads out of the hill, you know, the grades, it, it's downhill from the neighborhood in Skinner Road. <laughs> No lighting, no nothing. And we're actually taking the existing lighting down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is all this is all gonna be all new paved road. Coming it's gonna be gravel, paved paper and gravel, okay. and then the um mm. the top spots where the Right up against the place gate will probably be flat top also for the parking for some van, yeah, for vans, and then the rest will be all a gravel parking lot. So it's nice you drive right up there. Yeah. And then the sidewalk connects it. Sidewalk connect the pavilion. Is this gonna be handicap only parking up top here near the place gate or uh it'll the front couple spots will be. It'll all, it's all going to be dead flat anyways. So <clears throat> speaking with somebody with a wheelchair, even gravel, you know, tightly compacted gravel, which that's what we'll have, will be uh, easy enough. And with the sidewalk will be availability to the handicapped spots we have down the main parking area. The main parking area. And that's all millions. Mm -hmm. It's only it's only a site just as you come around the corner. And then the playscape areas are all going to be rubberized mulch. Or some of it's going to be rubber. We're we're using all three, all three. There'll be some mulch. There'll be a port and plate surface, and then there'll be a, like a rubber type surface. So this doesn't this doesn't look like much, but we did the playground for the Broward School. This stuff is very very expensive. Oh, yes. yes. Well, that's why you know we would love to use the the port and plate, which is all no maintenance. It's you know, but it's it's a lot. We got priced for that. It was like, oh right. my god! Don't and some it. of the areas, some of the <clears throat> playground equipment, you know, the kids are going to want to have the mulch there. But you know, and where Melissa's plan is to do a storyboard all around the whole outside. That's why the sidewalk connects it. So then there'll be highlighted stories in there, and they'll be able to go around it. And... What about seating areas? I just see there's some park benches here and there. Yeah. Um, the seating right now is, is minimal. Our our goal is to get the playground in, you know, financially, and then that's all stuff we can add later. How close is the playground area to the neighbors? Oh, it's in the middle of the field. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's 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 we're basically going in the infield of baseball the, the baseball field that was up there. So. I so the, yeah. the, the men's softball division is dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. Are there any other fields up there? Okay. We have two soccer fields up on the other side. No, no other on the other side of the band, the, uh, what are they, the uh, uh, bandstand. Uh, yeah, yeah bandstand. We had a hearing on something else entirely. And Mike Zepatelli was, I'll say, Bothered by noise of park. We did remove a tree. Trees. Uh, but basically, the the park yeah. had a a border of about uh, it was about fifteen feet wide along the whole border of seventy five to eighty foot high trees that 
basically outlived their life. Yeah. And they were a maintenance <clears throat> right. And they were they were causing property damage to neighbors. So uh the director decided that, you know, they've outlived their life, let's take them down and start over. Start over. Okay. So all these all these plantings in your rendering, that's just for effective. Are you actually putting yeah. in all the dogwood and that stuff? Or the, the, right now the specification shows we're putting seven trees in. Um the grant actually does not pay for uh, any landscaping. So there's seven and, and they're more um, I believe they're they're called out to be like oak trees. The purpose of the trees are to be shade trees, not not ornamental. Not ornamental at all. Yes, sheet one of one shows yeah. a bunch of trees. They're part of the plan or or is that existing? Or is this well this stuff that's what it does? I don't. That is a two. That is an elevation plan that this plant here shows for its plantings. Yeah. I'm not, I don't even know where this plan came from. Um, drawing is labels existing conditions. Are they actually there? Oh, it says, yeah. Progress. Yep. These are there. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Those are, those are the existing. Okay. So there are trees already planted. Yeah. No, we didn't plant these. Mr. Sepatelli planted these. Oh, that's where my hands out for water. Yeah, yeah, that's where right. he's right here. Hit it back that way. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's planted all of those. That's there. Yeah, that's right. I was asking. Yeah, because yeah. 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 his house is here in the corner. Yeah, but he's very. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good. The kids got a playground. They're going to have a, a water park in the playground. Nice, nice little park. Nice little park. Yeah. 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 Additional terms and conditions are prepared. Yeah. I do have a step by moment there um, in a draft motion to construct. Did we get? And all the other departments do their uh, comments. Yes, we heard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Engineering, the fire marshal, the building official, and the WPPA. Okay. So, and so the one condition that I did add was to adhere to the uh, changes to drainage and potential changes changes to DNS controls uh, advised by the town engineer in his memo. Have you seen that? Yeah, five. Yeah, my desk is across from his. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you had seen. <laughs> He's going to take it down on field and put it on a park. Right. We're probably get a lot more use out of it that way. Right? Yeah, yeah, the softball field actually has not been used in quite a few years now. And the fence was starting to get a little shabby and I think we're down to maybe four lights out of all the lights that are on the poles that work. The wiring going to remain? Are you going to? You know, we've already up? we've already cut the wire. We're going to get the fixtures off the poles and then pull the poles out. The DPW has been doing most of that groundwork. Do you think you'll be operational for this season? Uh, yeah, those are the order. The, those the, that's the timeline. I don't want to say orders. Uh, but yeah, that our, our goal, our goal was June first, but now we're shooting for uh, July. You know, for July Fourth weekend, we already have the playground equipment minus the one dragonfly looking that's ordered. Uh, all the playground equipment is at the DPW, ready for us to move it up there. Um, the weather, yeah. the weather, and you know, uh, obviously a contractor to start and do the surfacing. And we're simultaneously, which I think will be in front of you next meeting, 
with our soccer field lights. We're working with the same engineering company to draft all that. <clears throat> But is there anything else in? No. Okay. Nobody's got anything else. I'll entertain a motion on this. Okay. Um, this is just um new business. It's not a public hearing, so we can go straight to approval. Correct. Hey, okay, I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2023-5, a site plan modification for 27 Reservoir Avenue. Town of East Windsor playground construction um, with comments in and conditions in the memo from Ruth Ann Calabrese to the commission dated February 28, 2023. There's five general comments and um, 13 conditions. Motion for approval. Do we hear a second? Second. Okay. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you both. It's about happy building. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not an agenda, we have nothing under. Yeah, we're going into other business. The uh, work with Ryan presentation. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Sydney. I am here with uh, Desegregate CT to present on our Work Live Ride legislation. Uh, if you give me a moment to figure out how to share my screen. Yeah, I just made you co host. It might take a couple seconds before it does it. Uh, you should be able to hear it. Uh, can you see that? Yep, you can see it. All right, <laughs> great. Oh, sorry about that. Having some technical difficulties. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Great. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me here. Um, like I said, my name is Sydney. I am here with Desegregate CT. I'm the Transit Oriented Communities Organizer. Uh, and I'm here to talk about our work live ride um, state level legislation and the impact that it will have on different PNCs such as yours. So we had to desegregate CT to give a little bit of an overview. Our a uh, pro homes coalition of neighbors and nonprofits. Uh, we have about 80 different nonprofits in our organization from around the state. Uh, and we really believe in creating abundant and diverse homes and communities in order to solve our housing crisis in the state and to ensure that everyone has affordable and accessible homes to live in. Uh, our goal is also to promote economic prosperity, social inclusivity, and environmental sustainability in the future of our state. We really take an all of the above approach to um, our, the work that we do. So we try to build more kinds of homes, act within all levels of government, such as at the state and the local level with PNCs, uh, and work in and with uh, diverse coalitions in order to um, create our policy and create more homes in our state. So our legislation is really focused on transit-oriented communities, uh, which center uh, riders and pedestrians, offer a diversity of homes and jobs, and allow for exciting and sustainable places to live. Uh, this is a little bit less relevant to East Windsor specifically, but uh, our legislation is focused a lot on creating new transit-oriented communities within our state. So New England itself historically has been very transit-oriented. We have a deep history of uh, bus services, uh, trolleys, and all sorts of really um, di uh, dense and diverse housing around train stations. Uh, this hasn't been the case for the last few decades, but there is this deep history that we are excited to get back to. 
with our legislation. Connecticut is a very transit rich state with 111 towns uh, and cities served by local buses, rapid bus or trains. That includes about 40 million annual rail rides before COVID. The numbers are a bit different now, but they've, they're about 70%, I believe, of what they were. And we have over 42 million annual bus rides with current numbers of bus riders actually being more than they were uh, before COVID. So we did have some legislation last uh, legislative session that you may have heard about. Uh, and we've learned some lessons from that. Um, what we've really learned is that mandates for towns are unpopular uh, and our previous legislation kind of was one size fits all. Uh, we're This year we're really making sure that our legislation is based on what individual towns need and want. Um, we're also including buses in our legislation this year, which we did not have in the past and that kind of left out a lot of towns around the state, particularly in areas such as the northern parts of the state where there's not very much train uh, service. Uh, we also learned that local capacity and infrastructure issues are a major barrier to building additional housing, denser housing, or um, uh, allowing for more housing around transit. And we think that we also learned that local planning commissions need to be partners in our legislation and in the work in order to make sure the state does create more housing. So we have a new plan for 2023, uh, and this is our work live ride legislation. Oh, hold on, I can't see my screen very much. Um, so under work live ride, we are trying to create a more prosperous, equitable, and sustainable state that has enough housing for everyone who needs and wants it. Uh, it is a policy framework that is meant to align local and state planning goals and allow the uh, local level and PNZs to work closely with the state in order to create housing and transit-oriented communities. Uh, and it's really a call to action to be the change that you want to see in your own community. So this framework for Work with Ride is really about local opt-in. So a town or city's planning and zoning commission opts in uh, and commits to creating a transit-oriented community district along a rail or bus route, or in the cases of, um, in the case of towns that don't have uh, those areas, it can be along a state corridor or in just a major area of the town. Uh, it also create, um, it also allows for state assistance and funding. So the Office of Responsible Growth, which currently exists, but is not overly effective, uh, is designed to partner with planning and zoning commissions and direct 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 discretionary state funding for things such as planning and design, infrastructure improvements, and uh, home creation within the transit communities district or within the district in towns that don't have bus routes. So there's um, really three phases of this legislation that um, the Office of Responsible Growth will partner with towns in order to design and implement transit communities. So the first step is uh, planning and design, which assists with um, identifying the location and size of the transit-oriented district, um, fund necessary, <laughs> funding necessary site studies and planning, and approving TOC districts uh, for further funding and support. They also will assist with infrastructure improvements, such as uh, identifying necessary infrastructure improvements, uh, coordinating and expediting existing state discretionary funding for related projects and offering additional funding for specific projects that towns might ordinarily not have had access to. Uh, it also assists with home creation, such as in identifying the potential projects for affordable housing, uh, coordinating and expediting existing state discretionary funds uh, with working with developers and uh, offering additional funding for projects that are targeted based on affordability levels uh, for individual towns. So there's 163 towns and cities that fall into the tiers of our legislation, such as uh, rapid transit communities, which are those with uh, rail or rapid bus stations, transit communities, which have at least one local bus route or station, and then transit uh, adjacent communities, which are towns that uh, border rapid transit or transit communities. Um, so transit, uh, the TOC districts are also based on the service and population level. So for a town such as East Windsor, which is a transit adjacent community, uh, one of 52 like it, uh, the requirements would be uh, 
density of 10 homes per acres on an area of about 25 acres um, near a village center, commercial corridor, or state road uh, to stay a major place in the town. So as I said, East Windsor is a transit adjacent community, which would require just a zoning density of 10 homes per acre within this particular district. Mm -hmm. um, they're often around a half mile radius, but they're that was really dependent in this legislation on uh, what the individual town wants and needs and will work with the state to create. So East Windsor's Planning and Zoning Commission would be able to determine both the location and the size of a transit-oriented community's district. And the Office of Responsible Growth will provide assistance on planning and identifying uh, funding sources that are for necessary infrastructure improvements. Uh, so all of the transit-oriented communities districts uh, must share the following criteria under our legislation. They must be of a reasonable size, which is uh, designated both by the Office of Responsible Growth working with and the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, and ideally near a transit station, uh, although that doesn't qualify for, or that doesn't matter for um, towns that do not have public transportation. Uh, it must include as of right development of mixed use and mixed income housing developments. Uh, it also must include affordability levels based on state housing needs assessment. That is, I believe, for uh, developments that are over 10 uh, units and does not apply to all of, all of the buildings uh, for potential housing. Uh, it cannot include parking requirements, lot size minimums, or resident, uh, residency restrictions. So there's a schedule for affordable housing requirements as designated by the state. Um, and we have decided that um, areas with uh, certain levels of opportunity and market would be required a uh, particular amount of deed restricted, restricted affordable housing within their transit or two districts. Um, so this would be uh, dependent on how East Windsor is designated. I believe it has a high opportunity level, but I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, so that percentage of required affordable housing could be anywhere from about 10 to 20%. Uh, if communities don't opt in, they are ineligible for certain discretionary state funding that is tied to infrastructure. It's a handful of grants. They're not the most major ones and Towns are still able to get by it without it, but it does have some uh, impact on uh, on the town. So, if a town, uh, and additionally, if a town opts in but does not create a transit district, then they must reimburse any planning funding received and are ineligible for the program. The town or city cannot retroactively reduce density in one of these districts without facing penalties. So the discretionary funds uh, that we are talking about here are brownfield remediation grants, such as planning grants, municipal grant programs, uh, and targeted loans, as well as revitalization grants, such as STEEP and uh, Urban Communities Challenges, and uh, transit-oriented development grants, um, such as the TOD fund. We also have plans with this legislation to expand the Office of Responsible Growth by funding uh, four full-time land use planners at the state level. Uh, and this will provide uh, additional funding for existing Office of Responsible Growth programs uh, for transit-oriented districts and serve as really a top-up fund. The statutory authority to determine the town and city TOC district compliance is within the Office of Responsible Growth. And they also have the authority to coordinate other state agencies providing these discretionary funds. Uh, they would also establish TOC district guidelines and would provide public resources and data on planning best practices or to make things as easy as possible for town planning and zoning commissions. And that is all I have if you guys have any questions. Um, I guess I am a little bit confused in how um, this we went through something very similar. I believe it was funded by the state and worked on a plan for Warehouse Point, which is our area closest to um, transit and the only transit available in town. And for anything to happen there, a developer has to come forward 
and want to either retrofit what is and buy up lots and build something. And so far, there's really been no interest. Are you indicating the state would put money into something to make a developer come forward? That is a good question. Um, I just I'm, don't see how this is that different than the plan we already have on the table and how this is going to further the plan. Uh, I am not certain off the top of my head. I think that the state would uh, really incentivize developers, but I'm not certain. Uh, we can probably get wow. back to you on that. They would need to put a lot of money on the table. Yeah, that's uh, definitely something. The issues of the blue ditch. I mean, there's issues. And right. The state funded the study, but the state didn't offer anything for making it happen. Right. Um, that yeah, that's definitely uh, something that I can discuss and uh, get back to you on. Yeah, I I'm just trying to understand how this moves the ball further for us. Well, so for this. Um, this, this is establishing basically minimum obligations, which would be contained within the zoning regs. So based we're upon working on our zoning regs, to right? And so right. this may be not a big deal for East Windsor, but this is a state. This is a bill that's going to be adopted statewide, and so it's this idea of creating consistency between the densities, uses, and the way the development is handled in proximity to transit stops across Connecticut. Yeah. So, so are towns that are extremely uh, unhappy with anything beyond single family. This is I'm my, that my, my see, right. but for us, I just don't understand how it helps us. And I see a risk in what it's proposing that if we didn't do exactly what's proposed here and we continued with our plan, um, does that mean the Brownfields funding that could help clean up Broadbrook would be denied, which is a whole other area of town? I don't know that what- we It would... seemed to me that grants that were given would be taken back is this proposal. I don't know that what you guys have or are looking to do would be in conflict with this. Yeah. But this is just one more. Right. This does not. We would have to do. Well, yeah. Do we have ten? It's not going to give you an or... edge necessarily because it's not creating. It's not creating more market demand, but it's again creating a another consistency. Piece. Well, I feel like it's adding another piece of potential bureaucracy to what we've already done, and threatening to take. Mm -hmm. Brownfield money, if there is any, That's away from it. Broadbrook. That's so I, I see it as not necessarily friendly to what the town has tried to do. Do you already have the Brownfield funding? I couldn't tell you. Not currently, no. No, there's no, we don't have any Brownfield funds that we received. So, okay. so like, what are, they, what are they asking from us? They're asking us to opt in. On this, and you get free grant money, and then designated and designated an area, and they give us a free bus line, pretty much. Well, I, well, I'm not sure you get a bus line because people would walk to the train yeah. station, and the that was, wouldn't fund a bus line to the train station. And that was one of the things that we had talked about um, when um, Ruth and I met with some other folks from Desegregate with Jay and others. Is that there's a lot of this stuff that doesn't really pertain to East Windsor, mm -hmm. just because a lot of the a lot of the stuff in the proposal we've done proactively already. Right. And some of the other stuff we're not yet recipients of. We don't have. But we're it's on the wrong side of the of, uh, Well, you can't have this because you didn't do it our way. Well, I think that the, the way as proposed here is largely the same as what we're already doing. So, but do we have to now go prove that what we're doing is consistent with this legislation? So, remains to, to be seen. Yeah. To some to four new planners at OPM. So, Sydney, I have a question for you. As the mm. slide deck laid out, and so you have a slide that says, if you don't opt in, you can't you're not eligible for, money. for discretionary funding. And then you have a slide that yeah, says exactly. discretionary funding, exactly. And all these um, 
grant opportunities that the town currently would have eligibility for would if you don't opt in, yeah, you can't have you can't them. have yeah. So That's like how I read it. Is money for Park Hill or for some other part of town. Right. Uh, yeah. Yes. However, there's only I believe 14 grants that uh, would apply there, and some of them are specifically designed for trans or de development. So the town is still able to access a lot of grant funding from other sources uh, and from other grants. Uh, and I believe if you've already done this work to some extent, you can show that to the state and still be eligible to uh, have some of these sorts of brownfields grants if you've already done a lot of similar work. But somebody has to do the review to accept the plan we already did for the state. Yes, and I believe that would be done by the new planners at the state level. I guess I'm not clear on the value added to East Windsor. Um, yeah, that's a good question. There may be, I would imagine that if, if East Windsor were making a case that a lot of the work had already been done and if we supported your product, that we would want product to advocate on our behalf for that. Um, these OPM, I guess they'd be sort of a level beyond that, but yeah, you think that you know, particularly for like a lot of the studies that you're talking about. Well, so your warehouse point study came from DECD, I think. right? I think it was DECD. Group five corridor was CROG, but either way, I think that if there was any type of demonstration of, you know, we've already done certain mm -hmm. things, CROG reviews all of the legislative but decisions. Of I do, I'll say, checkbox, we have to go back through on all the work we've already done. And I feel kind of like you might we've done it. Now it's almost being penalized to go back and prove that you've done it satisfactorily. I think it would be more of an evaluative thing. I don't I don't know that there's going to be a huge process that towns will have to go through to demonstrate it. You either have it on the books or you don't. And this is all based upon what's proposed. This is I guess they just got a bill number, right? You guys just got a bill number, Sydney, in the last week? Um, yeah, I think so. This isn't finalized legislation as well. We're also having these discussions so that we uh, can get feedback and figure out what things need to be adjusted. Yeah, so there's there's going to be obviously significant changes to the language. I just hate to see them adopt the checklist and say, you missed one item, now you're ineligible for all funding. Uh, question, Cindy, since yes. we're transit adjacent, did I hear you say that the proposed area should be within a half a mile of the of the nearest transit station? Uh, honestly, I'm not as familiar with how the legislation uh, pertains to transit adjacent communities. Uh, I don't think that's been laid out as much, but um, basically it would be, I think, about an area of around a half mile radius, wherever in the town you would like to put it uh, and wherever you guys in discussion with the state decide would be the best for East Windsor. Um, and basically we just have a density of uh, 10 units per acre. Okay, because I mean, if we're talking about the Windsor Locks train station and it's on the other side of the river, we One may mile. not have very many, if any land that's within a half mile radius of that location. Right, and because the train station is in Windsor Locks, I don't think that would necessarily apply to you. So you, what would apply to East Windsor specifically are the guidelines for transit adjacent communities, which are a lot less, uh, the density is less, it uh, doesn't have to be around transit specifically for communities that don't have transit. So Windsor Locks having the train station would have more requirements under this legislation and East Windsor would not have those requirements. We could designate pretty much anywhere in town where this high density area could be. I believe so, yeah. Basically, in transit adjacent communities, it is designed to create things that are basically walkable downtown type areas. You could designate warehouse plumber if you thought that was the place that the density was most acceptable. 
or is there 25 acres? Not that well. North, well, you utilities. Yeah, yeah, North Water Street maybe. Oh well, it doesn't have to be a single parcel. No, um, but the total buildable land. Well, it doesn't have to be raw land. I mean, somebody could aggregate the properties. Yeah, that's you could, like I mean, getting a developer to do you that. Could allow someone to put a put up a, put something up in front end of the Geisler's Plaza right along the road. I mean, there's a a lot that, that could be done. Um, in density, depending on what the size is. I can't the developer in that. Right. To date. You could allow the density to be a thousand units an acre. If the numbers don't work, you will see nothing. Right. Yeah. So this And if this you don't deal with the void ditch and you yeah. deal with yeah. the other things. But one and Okay. Anyone else have anything? No. Okay, Sydney, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Okay. Do we want to just discuss the connectivity at all, or do we want to leave that for the? Lynn is here. Are there any folks here to join the workshop on the Broadbrook sidewalk? I am Noreen. Hi, Noreen. Hi. Okay. So, um, in 2019, we received funding for a grant that we applied for um, for the construction of a connectivity project, which was new sidewalks uh, connecting to existing sidewalks in the Broadbrook Village area. And these um, Lens on the plans here, but projects are for sidewalk installation are Old Ellington Road, Windsorville Road, Rye Street, Reservoir Ave, and Depot. Uh, and it, if I said it already, I apologize. Two and a half mile loop. And um, there are some images. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah. So it comes down Main Street to Old Ellington, down Reservoir, up Perry Lane, and down Depot back to Main Street. And there's also um, the Colvin. You want to come with the sure. I just wonder which side of reservoir is work. Uh, well, it depends. Where are you? Nine. Eight. Or on the other side. I know they trimmed a bunch of trees across. Yeah, the yeah that's where we're going, right down the tree line, down, across. And then when we get to the dog park, then we're crossing over. And then we're going to be on your side of the reservoir. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Joseph? Yep. Okay. You're right here. Yeah. So we're coming down. Initially, we were coming down that side of the road. And you know, the Keenan's property is pretty that, hard. That is going to be very much of a yeah. challenge. Yeah. That would have been a very expensive wall retaining there. wall. Yeah, with the wall there. Uh, yeah. So we chose to. We chose to come up with Windsorville. We chose to come up with Windsorville for a crosswalk in Cross Reservoir and then come down on the south side of Reservoir mm -hmm. um, because we own the property there. And, you know, we can, we can grade whatever we have to. We're not going to bother anybody over here. You can see we've got some grading we have to, have to complete. So uh, we're trying. I mean, there's areas where we're going to be in front of people's houses and we're, you know, we're surprised there's the only one here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. 
I mean, it's nice that there are going to be sidewalks because we, me and my wife walk around there quite a bit, but uh, well, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, when, when a sidewalk goes, we be on your property, it would just be right away. When a sidewalk goes along somebody's property, they have to shovel it and yes. maintain it. Yes. Well, yeah. that, just to maintain it from a shoveling standpoint. You know, if it cracks and breaks, no, 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 no. We're we're responsible for any trip has you know if it eaves or what have you or breaks off. That, so that's on us. Is a grass sidewalk island road? It, well, it depends. Some areas. Excuse me, Lynn, 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 Mike. This is Peg. Could you have the gentleman identify himself? I'm. I apologize. The gentleman you're talking to. Me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Joe, right. Joe LaJoy, Joe LaJoy, Nine Reservoir Avenue. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, generally you have a little bit of a, a lawn area. You'll have the sidewalk and then whatever's behind it, your lawn or, or yeah. woods or what have you. I mean, there are some areas here where the sidewalk's going to be right next to the road. And we're going to, you know, create a, a concrete curb with the sidewalk walk, you know. It, it's all a matter of grading. Uh, I did have one individual come to my office and we may have to do a little drainage or something in his front yard because he's got a little ponding issue. So we don't, we're not we're not trying to you know yeah. create any problems for anybody yeah. that they don't currently have. And if we can yeah. fix something while we're here, we can do that. Yeah. But he said it's um, kind of like stop at the dog park and then cut across. Yes, yeah. what you yes, it's uh right by the uh This see this right here. This this is the entrance to the dog park parking lot here. Yep, yep, yep. So we're going to come down along here, and then we're going to have a crosswalk, and then we'll come down to the, the park. And That's going to run right along. Go all the way down to Perry. Okay. So that'll give people the ability to walk to the new playground. Yep. Yep. Nice. Nice. That's good. Prices have increased a bit since 2017 when we first applied for this, as you might imagine. <laughs> the bonuses, too, is we're connecting Park Hill. <clears throat> Park Hill people will be able to come walk without having to walk around. Yeah. Here we already have sidewalks already, so that's good. That's going to be a challenge. When's it going to move? That's a big challenge. Oh, yeah. 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 People, people are, lower your attitude. Yeah, they have yeah. Some some adding it. There's some there. Um, park, whatever we, it um, ends up, we have a brand new sidewalk, as you may recall, coming up from the center of town because we had a little wall problem there along the pond. So that's a brand new sidewalk that comes up, go, comes up to Merlot. Um, Merlot put a brand new sidewalk in when they when they updated everything. However, in in their easterly driveway. Where people have been driving over it, it's all broken up. So we're going to fix that as we come through. And then, as you head farther east on Depot Street, there's a bit of a uh, plummy, crappy, broken, voluminous sidewalk that we're just going to take out and right. and put in new concrete sidewalks, similar to what we did down in uh, Courthouse Point on um, Main Street. Are there any other sections of this where we're going to be crossing the street back and forth, or is it just no. pretty much just residential? Yeah. Okay. Well, the only other thing we'll, we'll, well, we'll, we'll we have to, get to the cross end. Depot Street. When you get to the end of Perry, yeah. there'll be a crosswalk. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's also a stop sign there too. Yeah, yeah. that helps. Doesn't Rice Street already have by the school sidewalk? Not all the way. Oh. So at the crossover of reservoirs, is it going to be any kind of a crossing symbol or anything? Oh, like it'll that? be crosswalk. It'll be not, not electronic, but you know, kind of push a button to activate it. Uh, I've seen other places oh, like, like, like yeah, that activates no, like it or anything like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, our, the, the state has put up some actually crosswalk signs that actually have just a, you don't push a button; it just constantly flashes. Flash. The only tough part is that. That's kind of a blind spot when you're going down that hill, kind of like where that crosswalk will be, isn't it? No, actually, we, we moved the crosswalk, so it was a, it had a good slight gotcha. distance. It, it, it didn't shy of the parking over. We were going to, we were looking at areas to cross, and we wanted to cross before we got to this. 
but it's it's not a good area. So we wait until we got up the hill where we, we had a good sight line in both directions. Yeah, it's a it's about it's about seventy five feet shy of the park entrance, right. and almost literally where the dog park entrance is. That's where it's crossing. So it's nice in a nice flat area. Excellent. To answer your question, is the sidewalks we have current we have currently have sidewalks up to Mill Pond, so it'll be all new from. Uh, uh, no on up to parent to parent yeah actually well there's a that piece well that'll be brand new but yeah the from mill pond west is the crappy will be all over the place yeah. Yeah. Be what do you do with the railroad crossing then? nothing nothing we're just going to that that's right or anything or no that's where you play frog I, I actually i let me see we have a uh no it just it comes um, off at uh Well, it's a good thing those houses we put on Old Ellington, we made them put sidewalks in mm -hmm. when they came in. Now they'll be all the little spit in the triangle. Basically, you know, it would have been nice. We're just going to have a, the development know, that's going in the J. You made that put, put sidewalks in, the, and we would have been able to connect to all the There's nothing we could do with them. Real. Is there uh, anyone online that has any questions or comments about the uh, sidewalk plan? Yeah, Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street. I have a couple of questions. Um, how much is the grant for? Three seventy-five. Three seventy-five. Yeah. Three seventy-five. Yeah. Three thirty-four four. Okay, and then I looked up the grant um, specifications, and what I saw was that the grant money can only be used for construction. It cannot be used for relocating utilities. If utility poles need to get relocated, that's on the town or the utility company. Um, it talks about um, if you need to get any right of ways, if you need to compensate homeowners, all of that is not part of the grant. It's solely construction. How much is this going to cost the town? And is there a match that we have to accommodate? Is it a matching? There, there is not a match. It, there is not a match, but it's going to cost the town money because the we actually applied for this in like 2017. So right. the cost of everything has gone up appreciably since then. Okay, so do we know um, how much the town is going to have to spend? Before we're done out of our sidewalk fund. How much? A hundred? It could cost us a hundred thousand dollars out of our sidewalk fund before okay. we're done. And then as so far as we, we don't know until we put it out to bid. That's you know, we're okay. estimating at this so um relative to moving utilities like utility poles, I know on Perry Lane they have nice street lights. Um I don't think they're necessarily telephone poles, but they have very nice street lights. So if those need to be moved, is that going to be the town, the town and the and utility poles along the other streets? Are we paying for that? Are we going to go to the utilities? The, the utility companies have to move their utilities at their expense. Okay. And and they will do that for for the town. They've we've had them move poles for us when we've widened the road a little bit and, and such. Um, they 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 take a while to do it, but okay. Um, um and then you were talking about Perry Lane, though, Noreen. Perry Lane, mm -hmm. we're not. There's existing sidewalks on Perry Lane. We're not going down Perry Lane. Oh, you're not. Okay. Um. So, so on this two point two and a half mile loop, how much of it is town owned property that we have to arrange for the cleaning of the snow, the sanding, the salting, all of that? I don't have that number off the top of my head. But you know, if the you only, really the only town property that I can think of, well, I should, it, it, it's all on reservoir pretty much. It's coming down the hill from, from Windsorville, um, down past the dog park. And then when we cross by the dog park, 
it's in front of the town park and then it's in front of people's yards so that's basically the uh the stretch that would be town uh would have to maintain okay so all of the residents on these streets where the sidewalks are going to be there they are responsible for removing the snow and ice um do these do the residents know this like that they're going to have a sidewalk put in and that they're going to have this extra stuff they have to do and and I'm not I'm I'm a big proponent of sidewalks although my personal opinion on sidewalks is there should always be opposing sidewalks to avoid people crossing in crosswalks and cars not stopping and hitting them um so if you're walking east to west and back the other way it's you should have a sidewalk on the other side but um I'm not opposed to it. It's just this has been hanging around since 2019. The costs have gone up. Um, I don't, I tried to find anything about this as to if there was a public hearing, if there was anything, and I'm not finding anything. Um, so I'm a little concerned about what it's going to cost the town, where is that budgeted, and do the residents know? Well, this is actually the public information meeting, Noreen. Okay. Um, I was actually quite surprised. This is uh, this was uh, this was uh, applied for, developed, whatever you want to call it, by about four town planners ago. You got it, Mike. You got to switch in there. Who on the computer? I did. Oh, who uh, who thought this would be a good idea and applied for the grant, then left. So, uh, and then we've had several different town planners and it, it became my, sort of my project by default. And I was quite surprised as I think Ruth was when we went through the files and realized that the state actually gave us the money without any public information meeting beforehand. However, this is the public information meeting. It was advertised. Every I, homeowner that is impacted with a sidewalk in the front. Yep. Got a notice. So every, every Ruth just said every homeowner that's impacted got a notice in the mail. Okay. So and we have one here. <laughs> and and I've had I've had one couple come into my office and Ruth has had some come into her office. So I mean and, and hopefully they know. My concern is always it's it's more along the lines of we get these things, nobody knows about it, then we start to do it, and then I'll heck breaks loose because people are, what are you doing? What, you know, um, and that's not your fault, Lynn, and it's not the planning and zoning's fault. It's that people just are kind of oblivious to life. Um, and my other concern is that, yeah, in 2019, it might have been 334. It's probably at least $100,000 more now just with the price of things. And, um, um, and again, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, you know, you guys, you and Joe are going to have to get guys out there on a day like today, cleaning sidewalks, you know, is that another body that we possibly need? And again, I'm a big proponent of sidewalks, but I think they need to be in places where there's a lot of foot traffic. I'm not sure what the foot traffic is. And I, you know, I could have maybe found any of that out if there had been any other kind of public anything. So um that's th those are just some of my concerns on it and again um i know there's not a tremendous amount of money in our sidewalk fund um so if we don't have enough money in the sidewalk fund and we got to come up with another two hundred thousand dollars that has to go to a town meeting and it gets voted down because people you know over on my side of town i live in warehouse point don't want to put sidewalks out there. Where are we? You know, um, and um, that's mostly what I was concerned about. And I don't want us to turn back money that somebody has given us, but I also don't want to go into it. I don't know, but we not knowing exactly what we're getting hit with in our budget that we can. What the money in lieu of also comes and goes towards that too. Yeah, in lieu of yeah. Okay.
Right. So, is there anything that needs to happen on the, on our behalf? No, it was really an informational meeting uh, to give folks a chance to um, voice concerns and yeah, ask questions. I would have expected a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, there are a lot of walkers in town, so there are people who will really enjoy it. Yeah, I see a lot of people. Is there, is there a master plan of, I mean, beyond this project? Is there the next one in line? That you, that, for sidewalks? For sidewalks? I mean, is there a connectivity plan for that? Not, not that I know of. Well, on the list. You know, point, uh, Route 5 study has a bunch of sidewalk and streetscape changes well, and stuff. So that's all like specked out and kind of planned out, but there's not actual plans, but there is sketches for that and, and whatnot. But other than that, no. I like that idea of one by the river, but it's private property, right? On the Route 5 study, where they drew a reservoir. Our responsibility, a thousand feet. Pathway. Pathway. The big hurdle for this was getting by the pond that you guys did already. It was great. So it's literally to sign off by the pond. That would have been fertile. It's literally less than 20 minutes with the snow blower on the tractor. Yeah, we have we have we have, we have snow, we have sidewalk crew guys that go up. in the schools. Yeah. We're 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 in the center of Broadbrook doing a lot of sidewalks today, you know. So and in Warehouse Point. Well, and I have one more question. Is there a time frame to which we need to spend this money? Is there a drop dead date? Uh, well, apparently not, since yeah. it's we <laughs> had it's since so 2019 long. or something. It's probably so much with money right now. That... Yeah. No, there was they, they haven't. I I have been since it. Ended up in my lap. I've been getting, I've been sending in, I think, quarterly reports to the state. The DOT is actually managing the funding on this and, and overseeing the project. Um, and I've been back and forth with, with the gentleman that's uh, handling it at DOT. And I've sent him the uh, a set of these plans. Um, and told them that these were the plans that we were likely going to use, but understanding that we were going to have um, this public information meeting tonight, I didn't know what was going to come out of that. I put together a bid package and a contract that we're going to be utilizing. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. Now. And uh, he has that too, and he's, he's looking at it, or his people are looking at it, so that if there's anything that they need tweaked, we can do it. It'd be nice to get this. My plan is to get this done finally this this construction season. Yeah. Okay. And I and I don't think we'll have a problem with that as long as the state doesn't have some great issue with something. Should we say as early as July or as late as November? Yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. And can I just make one other comment? It's really not going to have to do with this, but I miss public participation. Your SharePoint thing on the agenda is not working this time. You know how you can click on that and I can go see all your documents? It's saying the mm -hmm. files are corrupted or something, just for your knowledge. All right, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, really the IT job. Oh, thanks, Lonnie. Right. Right. Looking forward to it. Taking a walk to the new playground. Thank you. Come for a summer concert. Yeah. And then you can swing in the swing. Bring a little wagon with it. Bring, bring the grandkids. Or you can sit in the splash pad. Cooler with yeah. wheels. Cooler with wheels. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with Avery Street South, Florida, but the work they had to do on that street to put the sidewalks in, where the whole DJ made to knock down, I made wall they had to put up. I just thought that it was crazy. We don't have self wonder money. <laughs> and now they're doing it. Well, the upside here is we're going to cut down some big trees that have been there for a long time. Yeah. Um, there are there are some guide wires that have to be extended out or dropped. There are no utility poles that have to be moved. 
there's one house that has some shrubs. Um, and then you know there's there's a few trees here and there, like the one up by the farms. Okay, so the next item that we're going to discuss is a formal discussion on a text amendment for farm regulations. Okay. Do you want to speak to this? Well, what do you mean? Uh, I believe at this point you should have in front of you the obligations. Oh, that's all right. I can just lay this on the table, though. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> so I believe you have in front of you now the the, uh, the language for the uh, text amendment, which we were proposing to the farm regulations, as well as the uh, the comments by town staff, and then our follow up. Uh, look, we've got all that. Um, to try to put this in a kind of some context, I believe you were also provided a copy of the, the plans that was going to the Weapon Commission, um, which is specific to our site, which doesn't necessarily have to be on your decision for a text amendment, but just to give context of what and give you an idea that this is, is truly is a farming operation out here. This is the actually. The, the site is located at the intersection of, of Windsorville Road and Chamberlain Road. Um, 100 acres, 100 acres there. And what we're looking to do is the yellow on this map is actually existing agricultural fields out here. There are wetlands um, that are along here, but as you can see, there's some old, there's some topography which was essentially left over from old mine, uh, mining activities out of this site. There's essentially, there's, a, there's an old pit face along the back that drops, uh, you know, about 14 feet. And then there's, for whatever reason, there's a hole, a big depression up along the front. And then over here, there's a bunch of irregularities where it looks like somebody stockpiled some material at one point in time. So what we're proposing to do is, is take and regrade these areas to, to make them useful and create cropland out of them. And this area up in here, we can gain eight acres. And, and, I, and eight acres is, is very important to, to herd in his farming operation because he can generate that much more feedstock um, for his animals. So, you know, that's, this is the purpose. That's what we're looking to do out here. Uh, again, the, the text amendment is trying to to uh, to give some guidance and some of these farmers kind of in accordance with you know the the right farm ordinance that the town has adopted, um, where they basically state the right farm ordinance that you know, we're a farming community, and even if farming has some type of nuisance associated with it, the benefits outweigh the costs. And therefore, farming is you know something that, that the town supports. Um, so I don't. If anybody has any questions on this, we can go on that later. But again, yeah. it's really here for the the tax amendment. And, um, oh, the only other thing I will state about this is we did actually get some correspondence from DEP. Um, and they have made the determination that their permits don't apply because this is a farming activity as far as their stormwater um, industrial permit, which would apply to a gravel permit, does not apply to this. So they've made that determination for us already. So that brings us back to the text and the post text in front of you. Um, again, our first run at this, based on our preliminary discussions with the town staff, was to put something in the farm regulations, just add another section that we could put in there. And with the caveat that says, if, if you comply with these standards and the farm regulations as a farmer, then you don't have to comply with the excavation permit standards um, that a gravel permit would, would uh, have to comply with. And again, what we're doing is we're just regrading Regrading for to for cropland, it does involve taking material off site because we have no place to put it on site. So we are excavating a, a large amount. Um, as you can see, we've got a twelve foot pit face we're getting rid of. So we're taking a fair amount of material out. Um, 
But again, it's all related to farming. And therefore, um, we're hoping, we were hoping to get uh, some, some relief from some of the requirements that, that are in the actual uh, excavation permit section and, and put something in the farming section. So it's, it gets difficult to kind of go between your actual site and the general generality of the text of the um, so yeah, I'll try to just keep it to the text and, and not right. really yep. address too much individual site, which we understand. And that's how the text amendment has to be treated. You got to look at it as how it applies to any property, mm -hmm. which we understand. And we've we tried to make, you know, things, mm -hmm. we're looking at it as a, as farmers in town. And, and what can we do for them for whatever activity they have? So, if I could just um, um, go ahead, jump in for a second. So, thinking about like just farmers in general with 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 um, improvements of farmland property in the town, and not excuse farmland me, project. excuse okay. me, excuse me, excuse me, Mike. Hey. I'm sorry. assuming sorry, that Peg. was Herb Holden. I, I'm sorry, Peg. I'm sorry, I should have written the hand. No, I'm I'm just asking who you are, Herb Holden, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. So behind that, it's like, so in our text, in our text amendment regulations, it's like, you know, and, and I understand the town's concern about like everybody opening up uh, either a gravel fill, like gravel dump site or, you know, a, like a filling hole and or a exporting hole, right? And so that goes back to, you know, what do you guys, I guess, envision as a gravel pit? And a gravel pit, to me, has sales processing. It's a business. It's going to be open for it's it's open for the the sole purpose of you know mining a property for profit. And you know if you're a farmer in town, you're not necessarily and you're trying to grow nursery stock. You're trying to expand your property for more tobacco. For myself, I'm trying to increase it for livestock and corn operations. And if you go out to this, my particular property, you'll see like the great elevation cut, if you will, but we're talking about it in general. And, and the thing is that like, we don't want to be gravel pits. We don't want to be, you know, marketing our material to Manafort and, um, you know, and trying to sell gravel as a livelihood. We're just trying to improve our farmland for the expansion of our farm business. And in order to do that, you know, some places may have to fill and some places may have to export um, in order to in order to achieve that. I was uh, just commenting with Tim before we started the session here. It's just like, you know, I was going back over my over my notes and I was, you know, this past year, there's a farm in town who received over 8,000 tons of process so they could build farm roads to route their farm. Obviously, they didn't come here asking for a you know, a, a permit, if you will, to do so, but just something that had happened. So when we're talking, well, that I think that's legal to grow so much per yardage for for years, as well as the move, and that's it. I think it's twenty thousand or forty thousand yards like that. Well, it's not their own; they they imported so it. Even worse. Yeah, we had, we had a discussion. Yeah. That's legal. Currently, at bringing material in or <laughs> taking material out, okay, of beyond a certain number requires a permit. Yeah. Sure. So if people did that, they didn't follow the process. They okay. should have had to bring it, get a permit to bring in that much material. Because we don't know what that material is. Exactly. It would be a contaminant. Right. But then, but I'm just saying, okay, so, and that goes back to your guys' zoning enforcement or, or whatever, whoever the person is. I understand, but like, that, yeah, well, that's. That's the number is 100 cubic yards. Yes. I don't I don't know the number of 20,000 yards. I was just throwing it out there. I'm just saying what, oh, he, yeah. I'm saying what he did was illegal. Right. So but that but that is but the okay. So we're we're dealing with two issues. And I feel like when I'm when I'm talking to you, especially at the last meeting, and uh, Mr. Gowdy was like, Well, how are we gonna manage this? Well, we were talking about we were offering a deed restriction. And Mr. Gowdy was like, Well, how are we gonna manage that? And I'm just like, well, you know, how the town 
does their zoning enforcement or their deed restriction enforcement versus like how we have regulations in the town. I try to follow regulations. Now, whether other people don't follow regulations, I don't feel should be like part of the decision making as to whether or not we have a regulation that that makes sense for the town. And so, and that's what I was getting at is like, this farmer needed to build access roads in their farm. They didn't ask for permission. They didn't go through that process. They should have. And that was kind of like half of my point. But at the same time, you know, like when we gave our text amendment uh, or, you know, our idea of the text amendment, the idea of the text amendment was, okay, we'll let you, the response was, we'll let you do five hectares. And that's, again, that's not commercial agriculture. And I'm trying to like, guess, what's that? I guess the question we're grappling with is when you talk about removing material from the premise or importing material from the premise, the premise yep. that's where the pain comes. Can you do something with contouring the land without the material coming and going? Good point. That's that's what my. You point said you had a hole. You had a. Yeah, you had all this other discussion. Yeah, yeah. I think we. We, the pain comes with the trucks coming and going with the at free will. Yeah, and the dust and all that. At least if you do it within your property. Yeah, and you're not causing the pain with the wetlands. There's, there's there's no place to get rid of it. Well, there's always you can upload. Uh, they can uh, make it. You can truck it for another place. More benefits from moving. Within, 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 within the site, site. No, keep it on site. Yeah, site and create a create a uh, higher high elevation. Just on the airplane. Because I do it gold mining. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it, it's the truck traffic in and out. That I mean, that's where all the complaints are going to come from. Oh, and the enforcement side of it to say, okay, how many, you know, how many oh, cubic yards is. And how far will you oh. be from the groundwater? Well, and will six inches be adequate cover? For cropping, I'd like to speak and to those two particular so, things yeah. in particular because, first of all, when you when you go into an area that's woody and you take down trees and you do any whether it's a gravel operation or a farming operation, mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to have six inches of topsoil to put back on the ground. So it, I think, the six inches of topsoil, a minimum requirement to reestablish on the ground is it's, in most cases it's probably going to require that you import more material just to bring in topsoil and on a farm like this what a farmer is going to do is he's going to amend the soil he's going to make you know he's going to use what's there and he's going to amend it. organics and organics and, and six inches of topsoil be even enough to plow for like corn if you're plowing does it dig in much deeper than six inches well and that's part of the process that, that creates the topsoil right that with the amendments and the plowing, eventually you're going to end up with your 12 inch plow later from topsoil. But it takes time. It takes time. It's, it's not going to happen right away. But the, you know, so the crop, the quicker you can add the amendments, the quicker you get that, the better off this crop's going to be. But if you're deforesting an area, you're not going to have 12 inches of topsoil there. Right. You're, you're, and like Tim said, you're probably not going to have six inches of topsoil. So you're going to have to figure out how to. Amend the soil, right? It's you know, this is all activity that still takes place on the property. Yeah. Even so that's kind of what we're trying to get towards is is there a way to achieve what you need or want and in, in reclaiming more land without having to have outside activity that everything stays on property that right. you that you amend the soil that you move it you regrade it you slope it you terrace it whatever you need to do. Because like you don't necessarily have, you can grow on a slope, you can, sure, there's well, things you can do that it doesn't have to be perfectly flat land and still be able to farm it. So that's kind of the point we're trying to get to is if it's a possibility to, to achieve the farmable land without having to have the truck traffic and the, and the you know, the removing of materials or bringing in a material than that, it's a, it's a much easier thing to live with. Yeah, right. Um, you know, we can move dirt around, obviously, to fill the soil, the, the pile, or fill the hole. Right. Um, but we we still have fourteen foot, nearly vertical slopes that we're going to have to deal with. Well, can't you make terraced farming, uh, right. high part and a low part? 
you're still going to have those slopes unless you can get rid of the material. There's going to be a slope somewhere. Even if you take it from one point and put it up on another, it's either, somewhere you're going to have breaks. You're going to have the yeah, slope. And so you, you have don't have a part to farm here and a part to farm here. Yeah, but you don't get the eight acres. You don't maximize the use of the, the use of the length. I mean, if you look across the street from my neighbor, like again, we're talking tax amendment, and I'm thinking my my property. But if, you know, across the street, it's just a long, rolling, sloping field that they farm 100 percent of. Unfortunately, on my property, it's here's a field, here's a 14 foot cut, here's another field, here's a wetland, here's an, and then and then here's a field. Oh, and then here's a massive hill. Which we're not even talking about the massive hill, but it's just this is what this is where the predicament that I have personally comes in and we were just like I said looking at the the um the farming regulations which don't have a lot of definition behind them and trying to find a way to um make it so that it would be advantageous for farmers in the community but if stuff comes and goes it's excavation that's, but that's that's common with farming stuff comes and goes from fields all the time they're always harvesting trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the difference if it's dirt or tobacco? I mean, like I don't, or or or, or I'll I'll be the first one. To <laughs> corn silage. I we blow corn silage all over the roads all the time. I'm out there shoveling and sweeping the roads as best as I can. But I'm like, you know, but when we're harvesting corn in August or August September, you know, those trucks are they make a mess. But I'm out there sweeping the roads as best as I can. But you know, guess what? I have you know, we'll have you know, 150 trucks that you know that weekend that were. But I think born. people feel like those trucks are farming when they see dirt and gravel moving. It's, it's people perceive it as mining. We're gonna have every every Everybody. gravel pit that's gonna come under this regulation. Right. Well, which is the reason why we we put in like a catch-all as far as like having a deed restriction. Right. That's and we understand that. and no processing that that's a concern and that's why we put in that that a deed restriction into the language to make sure that somebody's not going to just come in and, and try to bypass the other regulation. Well, I think I think Ruthanne brought up probably the best points is that when we start talking about excavating, now we have to start looking at where the water table is. We need to see what the elevations are, what the final grade is going to be, um, those types of issues. Where under your proposal. Just kind of have at it. Well, groundwater is another issue that for a farmer, your, your regulation for eight feet to groundwater is for a farmer, the closer to the groundwater you can get with that topsoil, the better off you're going to be. It's better for agriculture, it's better for the crop. And after 10 years, the crop, well, when you put the manure yeah. wants to put a subdivision in there, they can't dig a cellar. <laughs> For a while. Well, there's another way that you're going to restrict that land to farm, isn't it? I mean, that, that's, that's kind of what we thought was like, like, so now you would have this property that, that was originally amended for agriculture. So let's say that person comes back to the, this, it would be coming right back to this commission that says, hey, I want to build a subdivision on this property. And you could say, well, you know, at that point, and this is right, the reason why we wanted the 10 year restriction is like, so the, the commission, could sit there and say we approve this for agriculture we think it's it's best in agriculture we're not going to do a subdivision or maybe something else has changed in your community that you're like you know what we really want to you know see that this part of town starts seeing either houses or warehouses or whatever it is yeah, that you want to do. do that if somebody comes in and they meet the regs then they have a right to do it we can't just say you know, how do you meet the regular subdivision based on what its zone is and okay. with subdivision regs, we can't just say we don't want it here. Right. It's just that's illegal. If they meet the regs, they meet the regs. One of the things that I'm we've been batting this around, trying to wrap our heads around how do we how do we close the gap between where at least our comments were and where you guys are, and trying to recognize the totality, as they said, about who may either say, why couldn't I have done this before, or now I want to do this, and try to create a distinction. <clears throat> the challenge here in with any zoning issue is that the potential future use of the property can't be factored into how the decision is made because we, they can't force, you could run through this whole thing, remove all this gravel, and then say, 
we don't want to do farming. And so the 10 year restriction is, is one thing, but it's coming in under this is what we're going to do, but it, it's not a mandate. The town can't mandate that used to happen. So there's that one piece. The other thing that I'm trying to understand is based upon the existing oper operational standards or requirements in the zoning ranks now, I, I guess the issues that my sort of thinking through are one or that we've talked about are one the requirements to develop a plan, a legitimate, bona fide, tangible document, two, um, bonding, and three, my assumption is the third, which we haven't addressed or talked about, is that there's a special permit that's required. Because so I the plan can't be as big of an issue for this operation, though we're not talking about this operation because the plan's there. Well, isn't that for the 500 cubic yards? Right. And so that yeah, the 500 cubic yards basically came from us talking what do we think is the most reasonable way we can get this to move without creating an operation that is really something else. None of us, I think, have any issue with where you all want to go, but we're sort of at odds with how we get there. Um, I don't think any everybody wants what you're trying to do to happen yeah. and the, the business to be as every ever since I met you, everywhere I go, Broadbrook beef is on the menu. Thank you. And I'm like, great, now I'm thinking about work. Um, but no, I, I think it's just sort of the mechanism how we get there. But it, so if the plan is an issue, but maybe not a huge issue because you have one, the bonding, and I don't really know what we've required for bonding, what the amounts are, how those have been provided, and if there's any flexibility in how that's done. Certainly, the statute provides that there are other ways to bond beyond just cash. Um, so is there some flexibility in that? And then third, what do? You, how big of a barrier is the special permit process? How, how big of a barrier do you see that to be? Well, I think there's some other issues in the current earth and earth excavation thing that also needs need to be addressed if, such as uh, minimum setbacks right now you have minimum setbacks in there mm -hmm. which a, a farmer can farm right up to his property line mm -hmm. and if you have to apply the 100 foot setback which is what's in your regulation then that's really restricting his his best use of that link for for agriculture um, you know, we want to farm, or in this particular case, we just want to go up to the road, start at the edge of the road, which you do have the ability in here to, I guess, weigh the front yard 100 foot buffer. Um, but that again, that's something that, what, that for a farmer, we like to not verbiage that that you can go within that 100 foot buffer if you meet the elevations of the abutting property. So that the, that whole idea was to allow for sloping and to allow a transition between properties. So if you're not talking about, you know, dropping your elevation to the point where you come up to the property line and now all of a sudden you created a cliff wall. Um, well, how are the grades shown? Is there a lot of topo? Or is the way it finished grades going to create a situation when there's a lot of potential runoff mm -hmm. off the property or grades sloping away from? Or towards property lines? You didn't no, prepare, no, you didn't prepare yeah. a finish. This, yes, this is a finish grade. Yeah, That's right. finish grade. Yeah. And, and, and actually, it's we're not really changing the drain. Right, right now, everything drains through the road down to what? And essentially, we're matching that. Mm -hmm. We're going to the property line. Here's the here's property line, and here's the other, right. but here's the street. And, and in our case, we don't really have an issue with. Our abutting property because we're not going within 100 feet of them anyway. Mm -hmm. But we are going right up to the street because we don't want to have, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to fill this hole mm -hmm. or we wouldn't be able to take down someone's mouth. So we really. But you're going to meet, you're going to basically blend to the grade of the. It, true. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not, again, trying to fit all properties, saying that, you know, you can. Go within that hundred foot buffer as long as you're meeting grades of the abutters, right? Right. So, Which would require some type of language change okay. in, in your in the regulation, or just in the farming side of this, or the farming side again. Yeah, it's it's. How do I deal with this? Do we deal with it as farming regulations, or do we deal with it as something in this section? I don't. Because I mean, again, we're making this exception for farming, right? 
So every other gravel pit operation is going to say, hey, these guys are going to run carte blanche. They're hauling out as many trucks as they want, trying to back door in through the farm wrecks. You'll be pulling out God knows how many trucks out of here with no oversight. That's what they're all going to say. And you know what your answer could be to that? Look at the farm ordinance. The farm ordinance that this town adopted has a statement in it that says any nuisance associated with farming, which would be traffic, which would be noise, which would be dust, is acceptable because the benefit of farming outweighs the negative. So I look at this as, well, okay. maybe you're trying to haul out all the good stuff, bring it back to the sell yard, it. sell it, and then make your phasing. But there's, there's money here, a lot of money here. So of course you'd want to haul it out. So we're not, we're not, we've done this before. This is, we're raining to create farmland. That's what we're doing. It's will a significant we, will we, excavation. It is significant excavation. But it's also broken into phases, and we can break it into more phases if that makes the town more comfortable. And the town, and in, in the phasing, we- Again, we can't look at it just that your farm. Right. No, 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 I, 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 I understand that, but I'm saying for, it, for the farm regulation, like we have it broken into phases so, that are matching the ex extraction. If you want it to be the, your current regulations. If you want it to be in smaller, then make it in smaller. It has nothing to do with my plan. It's we were just trying to stay consistent with what your other extraction is. And, and so that's your how, control point. How many acres of the property are currently corn? Uh, I don't know. I have to say how many on a peak? Right. In and some of well, you don't have the other field in there, and the other field's like another just not so there's 60, so there's 65. Farmable acres, and there's 30 acres that are like the the bog area. area. So up yeah, 65, and of the 65, there's 30. I'm trying. Yeah, to there's one. I had the number once. So we're approximately 50 percent is currently you currently you you currently use, and this would get you eight eight additional eight. Yeah. yeah. So if if 30 acres is approximately currently in production now. If this if this operation as proposed takes six years, throughout that time frame, what is what is the amount of production, or how many acres will remain in productivity? Right. So what I'm trying to figure out is is 90% of this going to remain farmland while you're doing this, and you know as you go to phase two, phase one will go come back online. Correct. That's that's that is will it out change this rock current farming land. It's yeah. Only, yeah. only the area, only the active phase. Active phase. So the act, that's why we split it in phases. We work on this phase. All this would remain in farming. Once this is done, this would be reverted back into farming. We work on this phase. So it's okay. I thought it wasn't farmable at all right now. These are already open fields. Okay. The the yellow is open field, but what we're looking to do is it'll have the white section. The white section. White section. Okay. Yeah. And, and another thing in, in response to yeah. your concerns is, again, we're not looking at this as a gravel pit. There's no scale house. There's no, you know, sales on site. It, it's well, it's you, going you, on. You, you still can yeah. 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 process it someplace else yeah. later, right? you know, down the road. You get it. Are these houses or are they uh -oh. just properties? Over here? Yeah, like the like where you would dig it all out. Right on that. This side. one and this one. These two properties. Yeah. This is not part of any of the excavation area, is it? Or no, 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 that's no. Not. this is only a bit easier. We're over here. Okay. Well, then, uh, no, actually, we're this this dark. The yellow is the, farm. The ground, that that's that? this is our kind of our limit work here. Everything in yellow is what we're currently farming. Right. So so it includes like that. Big, to get all that no, no, no. no. So there's an old there's, there's an old house in Chamberlain. Is that in that corner over there? That white house? That old is that uh, the a, pink house. Oh, the, whatever color was it. So my, my old pink house is right there. There's a house here. Okay. And then there's like there's your guy, that's mine. Yeah, okay. okay. That's my lovely number. And then we and then that four decrepit one across the street. Okay. And then the neighbors would be here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but there's all that there's provided harm. Right. Yeah. 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 That's just That's great. Great. All right. All right. Do you have an anticipate? I mean, in all seriousness, how long do you expect this to take? We and we we actually looked at truck truck traffic too, based on we're thinking maybe five years, based on five years to do this, um, and the volume. And I think what was the number I used? I think it was based on 20 days a week or a month, 20 days per month over the five years, it ended up being like 10 trucks a day. That was it for truck traffic. But if you have an active day, I mean, the idea would not necessarily be to do 10 trucks a day for four yeah. days. You'll do, because if it was going to be that, there's a, I mean, you can put those are limitations that perhaps have some merit, right? If you had an operation that was tied to ag and it was a 10 trips a day, because like Wapping Sand and Gravel was what, 90? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a huge distinction between that. Wapping Sand and Gravel would never come in under this because they need 90. They can't do 10 right? trucks a day, yeah, right. So if you're if you're at if your total daily max would be significantly lower, the traffic would that, rather that would, that would help you a lot. But that allows that gives us room to create a distinction between mining yeah. and a, and a right. regrading because a, a commercial for profit operation is not going to come away with ten trucks a day. No, no, but that but that's not how you're going to run. You're going to run Monday, Tuesday, forty trucks, and then you'll be off. You know, like, and I recognize you don't even know that. Yeah, you don't know. Well, if you're going to run, you have a need. No, it's not really going to much rather have a few trucks than a lot of trucks. Right. I mean, we can, I can certainly be accommodating with that because that's not really, again, that's not really the, the operate, the motive of operation here as far as like, I don't need 50 trucks a day. I don't need whatever. So, how, point like, so however you want to manage, however you want to manage that. Sure. Yeah, so if, if you limit it to a, to a 10 truck today, they limit that would make it a big distinction between yeah. a gravel operation and a farming operation. Well, but it, in reality, would it? Because you, you were thinking you'd have one guy over there and you'd probably fill it and run the throw. Yeah, but I mean, I, I was so okay. So we were just talking about like the week. As, as far as like if it was 10 loads a day that's on average on yeah. average so so if we did 40 loads in over the two days is that going to be an issue and nothing for the rest of the it week it would be for the abutters yeah. they have 20 bucks yeah. but 20 trucks a day yeah mm -hmm. all right then they're going to just keep seeing it go in front of their house over and over it's still i mean you still need to make 10 to eleven thousand trips total yes. to get it out there right the part that's of those what, right. is so it's like a day like for example today like today we obviously yeah. wouldn't be able to haul if we had the rain day that we had last Thursday. We wouldn't be able to haul. So, like you know, like there's going to be so, there's that's why I'm like maybe fifteen's the number then. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's the solution. Yeah. I'm just no, literally thinking. Yeah. So now, now it's slowed it down. Where like like Mike's built, yeah, yeah, always exactly. down. Exactly. Well, the legitimate travel business is yeah. not going to yeah. build five and a half eight trips. That's true. So, like, that's fine. so that's not really that's not really. You know, not like you can go into the records. They're not going to come in and say, "Hey, listen, you want to do the same thing? We're only having fifteen trucks a day. They'll never survive." Well, like we said, how are you going to make no? How you count? How do you count the big truck? We we do it all the time. Uh, I, I, I it's kind of a running joke. Like, who's count many trucks a day? One. No, they're supposed to. They're they, they have a system. Yeah, they have a system. But well, in, in a farm, you're not going to have them having tall slips. No. But if you're doing all the hauling, you can make them have. Account. If somebody complains. If someone complains and says, I saw 40 today, you can go back to or, or do a quarter the quarter and say, How many did you do? Well, I keep a log. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you, unless you made it really punitive, saying if you're if you document well, the, that you violated it three times, you, you lose your right to, to continue or something. To the point where somebody wouldn't be willing to take the risk of, of violating their, their limits. And that's part of where the 500 cubic yards came from, is that you know, 500 cubic yards, if everything goes well, but another 500 and another 500. And that chunk, I mean, that's really small increments. Yeah. But, but it, it's on you. Just the complaints. It's incumbent upon you to go through the process. 
because then we won't get to continue it if there's if there's yeah. issues. But that's that five hundred what that's fifty truckloads. Uh, no, it's like twenty truckloads, like twenty five truckloads, twenty seven point seven. We basically depending on the material, the material. So right, eighteen yards is that like that's actually more than what you could put on for like for the this material because if it has rock in it, then you're looking at sixteen. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the material in our yards. And, so and you're talking that for what a month of a year or about how long phase for phase? Well, we well no. What I think what we did was we landed on if you want something that's as of right, although that's the wetland term, mm -hmm. which is sort of exempt from the traditional review process, we think that should be capped to 500 yards. Anything in excess. Yards. But that only limited clearing and regrading not to exceed seven acres in an area or five hundred cubic yards for the entire project. So I don't think there's anything that would prevent them from coming back. It would multiple projects. In theory, um, it was just trying to create figuring out what size project is reasonable and tolerable and based on volume and duration. And we went from the 100 basically increasing in five times and then looking at some of the space. Now, are you talking in an administrative filing or having to come through here and again? I think what they're requesting is an administrative review through the staff. And I, I, is that due to the neighbors who will buy it? Yeah. And that's the, the piece that you're going to I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confused because we were just talking about doing like 15. Like limiting to 15 trucks a day, and then that would be like almost 500 yards and or 300 yards in, a, so in, in one day. day. So, yeah, yeah, it's like to say, it's really be in every day. Every day. Here's my request for today. Here's my request for today. Um, Where do you plan? Well, now it doesn't matter to allocate. Where do you plan on hauling it to the main shop? No, it would go to um right. It would go to my recycle yard where I have a project. It would be ideal because it's just going to go right down across the street, street. Down, 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 the road. Not really down the road. Not really across street. Down the road. Yeah. 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 It stays on Chamberlain. It doesn't leave Chamberlain essentially. Because my so. So. Well, it's the point of there There's no. Time? There's literally just three houses that we pass. I'm thinking about impact for the well. If the, the grade changes and you're down there by groundwater where you want to be as a, a farm, um, it just seems like a, a, you know, I'll say it over and over again, it's a significant excavation. You're going down pretty far to start and then make your way back up to the road. Right? You're down down there. You have the face and then all that stuff is yeah. eight feet more that you're digging out. Um, before you're regrading. So it, I'm just wondering if there's going to be an impact on water level on the, the wetland systems themselves. It's pretty swampy back there. Right? Not, Did you make your way to the backfield? The backfield is dry as can it be. It is, but you have to cross a wetland to get there. Right. And if your final grade is really low and you put manure all over it, it goes right in the groundwater. And I don't know if those people are on wells or not. That's sort of the catch, I think, that I'm, you know, besides bonding for me, that, that, that issue doesn't go away. But, you know, you're creating, in this case, creating farmland where it wasn't. And I, I, I don't know how much about wetlands regulations that you, you're aware of, but like, you know, if you're a farm, you could drive a, a truck through the farm, through the wetland loopholes, like you don't have to worry about it, right? So most farmland that is naturally farmland is near wetland or a wetland, right? And so if you have to, that's where you farm. That's, you know, that makes sense. Things grow well. Go and create farmland yeah. where it doesn't exist. Now that land, it, now it can, you can, you can basically bypass all the wetlands rules. So you have to be careful. I'm not saying not to do that, but like you have to think about that aspect of, of how to, you know, we're not just creating a 
larger lane in the planning and zoning regulations, but we're we're allowing the possibility of completely bypassing projects past wetlands without even you don't even have to go there. Well, no, that's not true because you have to demonstrate that your project's not in the. All you got to say is and prove that you're a farm, and you can. And yeah, but farms are not allowed to fill a wetland. That that regulation ended a long time ago. You cannot fill a wetland, and you have to show you have to show demonstration of how we're protecting the wetland. We've done this. We've done yeah, projects. I can just tell that. you from years of being on the wetlands commission, farm people come in and want to get away with a lot of stuff because they're farming. And it's better, you know, understandable. I'm just saying, like, we are not allowed to fill a wetland. We can farm in the wetland, but we are not allowed to fill a wetland. We can farm up. Well, technically, I think we're supposed to be farm up to the wetland. You can have pasture in a wetland. You I can have pasture in a wetland. You can farm on wetland. You can farm on the wetland. You can farm on the wetland. If you look at the case law, you know, there's, you end up in fights because of it. Costly ones. Even in this town, we had a costly fight over Farming and wetlands, basically, is what it's boiling down to. But um, so I just I just add that in there is you know we have to take that into account. I'm not saying you know and we shouldn't create farmland. <laughs> I think it's probably a good idea, maybe. But and we are right. showing you erosion controls, and we wouldn't expect you not to require erosion controls and, and safeguards against any type of uh, you know sedimentation or runoff into the wetlands. That's we would understand that that's going to be a requirement that's in there now. And yeah, I'm just future. thinking more on the um, finished grade and use and the impact that might have. I was just thinking about you're going to be closer to the groundwater table because you know where it is, you can see it, and um, what what impact that might have. And if you do it in places where the people are on private wells that abut it. Is it going to yeah because it's is pretty ancient their wells. Yeah and, and so to craft a, an overarching text change to this and seeing like I don't know how many of these would come along um, to have to dig down that far in order to we're not really digging Great. 14 feet is not that deep. I mean, that's and I, again, that's at the face. And it gets right. less it's not like we're digging down into the water table here. We're, we're essentially are, we're taking this slope at, and yeah. we're flattening it out. There's already it's pretty flat out there now and then it drops off. So right. you're going under and it, to me in my in my vision, it, you're under and you're you're peeling back and you know. Contouring, but it's a, it's to get there. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go in deep and then taper off, right? If you're going, if you're taking a fourteen foot face and you're, you're all you're doing, you're basically you're pushing that face back. So there's going to be a face. There's always there's going to be a face as you move it back, and and eventually the face is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter the further back you go because you're coming up from the bottom. At a slope. Okay, but all the stuff underneath there, under, like between there and the top, because it's kind of level. Like it's, it's going to be excavated. So yes. Yeah. This counter line goes, you're at 182 here. Down to, yeah, down at the bottom, the total slope. So it basically goes from 182 up to 190 and then it drops yeah. back. But yeah, like here we're 180, 178, up to 190. And then it drops back down. And well, then it continues so, to, to go up. So it's stream. Over here, it's flat. And here it drops back down. No, so it drops down. It, that's one right in here. I think this is where it drops down. So this is the central oh. flat. This is 194, 194, and then this is the hole. Okay. But this is relatively flat, and then it drops at the at the old big face. Did Frank said this was an old dump or something like that years ago. Frank said that old dump or old gravel pit or something. It's an old, it's it's a gravel pit, pit. Which, not dump. which would explain why there's an old pit there yeah. and why there's all these. You know, what's that? It's it's not, it's yeah, there's dredging equipment in the in the yeah. in the big pond. That's not right. There's still dredging equipment in there. There's yeah, yeah there's a there's well, they dredging there. for it. What's that? Well, they dredging for it. Well, let, let me tell you, I don't think that would be 100 percent natural. Yeah. We'll just say that you know, from back in the day. There's an old contract there. I don't know if in the water just floating there. 
not gold. <laughs> Um, that's well, I mean, now to try to get back to a one size fits all yeah, that's regulation, I mean, um, what if we tried to flip it and make it put it back in 814? That's uh, excavation and grading, or? yeah. To have like a uh, excavation meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Way in the flat. <laughs> you know? Well, because I mean, this is so unique. Well, I'm just trying to think how that would apply to any other application. So now if we're saying that you can apply under that 814 and it doesn't well, another necessarily different. have to be farm is that what you're saying or or have a farm have restriction a farm. under 814 farm excavation farm reclamation or yep. farm land reclamation section Just separate farms or a couple okay. of separate farm standards or exemption or however you want to put it but intended uses like mike said it's unenforceable i can come in and say i want to make this into farmland and by the time I'm done, the market changed. And the, but if there's a deed restriction, how is that not? Then, then they, I don't know if they do. There's enough can't get out of it. Sellable material, then they walk away from it and say, "Okay, I don't care. Let it sit there." So I mean that that is one question: is if I file a deed restriction against myself, what prevents me from removing it? We'd have to figure out the, what the language to that would be. Um, the other thing that that um, kind of got us on the discussion of the topsoil and the, uh, in my original comment about the six inches is that, as you're painfully aware, we had a development in another part of town not that long ago that said I need to put an uh, infrastructure and pipe in the ground because the site was gravel and won't support well. Right. So my issue is 11 years from now, when he's so wildly successful, he's retired and he's not even worried about this anymore. What do we do with this piece of property? Because if it, it it won't necessarily support anything else, maybe that's a problem. Maybe it's not. But we've certainly run into that where where that's what Corey Meadows mm -hmm. could not could not support, and they had to run that pencil line all the way down through to the tune of one million plus dollars. And then they came back and said, because of this cost, we need increased density. So, so all of those things came from a site that doesn't support the use that the zone intends. So we're trying to figure out how the site doesn't become completely useless. Um, and if it's going to be, then the 10 year restriction ought to just be a perpetual one. But I, we already have had that discussion, yeah. but, yeah. but you know, we need to be more eyes wide open to, can we reutilize the property based upon how it's gonna be left? And the answer is no. I think that's a, a point of consideration. Although I could argue against it because we can't do anything else with it, then it's going to have to be added. <laughs> right. If there were a larger development that's abutting, we right. needed that piece of property. Right, for density. But if it doesn't support septic, you're not going to really do much else there. But the issue of groundwater and adjacent wells is still something that would have to be evaluated, I guess, not my area of expertise. Which is something if a farmer had to do it, wouldn't have to evaluate it. But there's, but because of the significant amount of material, farmers can push things around and they can do all that stuff. But the site is already farming, and it's not, it's not happening to the to the degree that it's happening here. Because the the farmer might move some stuff, he might spread manure in a wetland, he may may be close to groundwater, but those are all existing conditions. We're going from something to where it is now to something significantly different. And the question is, does the commission allowing that activity create something beyond just the short-term nuisance? And I don't think you're hauling a lot of stuff out. That's what they catch. Yeah, I mean, I've been racking my brain. I've read up this, on as much of this stuff as possible. Um, my, my partner, John, who was here last time, he's he's president of the board of the RCMB. He's written planning for, he helped write planning for agriculture. They do it every couple of years. And this is a, something that he said, we've got a lot of involvement. I just, I, 
Did he have any thoughts about this? I mean, I'm almost just wondering if there's if this is a lesser question. Um, if this if this bridge has already been crossed by other communities, East Windsor is hardly the most agricultural community in Connecticut. Certainly, others that are as or more, and especially some of the hillier towns that have some real interest challenging slopes. I have plenty of examples of what not to do, how not to do it. When we talked about in our first meeting, but I'm trying to understand if, if there are other towns that have a mechanism for reducing right. Uh, Bonding, you know, but there's some of these other things too. Is where's the middle ground? Where's the stuff that we can sort of figure out a way through? And where are the things that you think might be reasonable to actually produce or provide or review or whatever it is? Um, I mean, I, I've kind of got it in my head that, you know, there's probably a number that we could come to saying, okay, up to a certain amount of cubic yards is is reasonable beyond that now you're a, a mining operation so unfortunately it may not apply to this situation but it would probably help other situations they, is, they want to be a stripping operation this, basically. Is, this is a large amount of dirt yeah just looking to maximize the crop is the eight acres that's just the, is the, white, the base? Yeah. yeah, it's just a white. That's that all the that white within the, yeah, it yeah. doesn't okay. include this year. This was clear, but it's within this. Mm -hmm. uh, so the majority yeah, of it's there. It's, it's, it's actually all through there, where, but this is where we're gaining it. Yeah, we're gaining it on this pit face. This because there's irregular piles all over, and this we're gaining where we fill that hole. I mean, at this point, I, I like Mike's ideas to is to reach out to other municipalities and see if uh, anybody else has had to tackle something similar to this and see if there's any, any other guidance out there. How do you word this one for the list, sir? <laughs> yeah. Or you just go. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. I mean, we can certainly figure out if there are any, if anybody has yes. a mechanism. Accommodated. Pathway. I think the truck truck trip will definitely be something that would help a lot. So the two biggest are moved down, which the volume. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going right around the corner too. I think he comes out. I don't know where your access road is coming out in Chamber Chamberlain, but you're right around the corner where your plants over here, right? Right over here. It's, it's, it's down the it's, street. It's down, yeah. It's, yeah. So you, you just have to cross where you go and go yeah. down the end. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's this site specific. You gotta, you gotta think of every yeah. spot in your town that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So that will stand. We'll, yeah. Uh, okay. We'll yeah. Right. We're going to look for some more guidance on this. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. I I'm just wondering if it's, I mean, it's the John Nichols. Yeah. It's just about the standard thing. I, I just am not sure. I mean, she, that's a, it's, she's very involved in policy. I don't know. If, I mean, it's possible. She was I here not. a ton when we were doing our right to farm rights. She was going to different towns trying to get more towns to do that. The planning for ag, which I have. It's got nothing for her. She's smart. She's big. Yeah. 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 You might know somebody that knows. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give her a call. There's nothing. Like we went through this last time. There's nothing we just wrote about this, which is crazy. Um, yeah, because I mean, 
the idea of incentivizing the development of more farmland is, is a great idea. Yeah, but in gravel is the size of the project. This, I mean, this is huge. Yeah. Right. Well, you wouldn't be so bad. People are going to haul stuff out. Well, I mean, you, yeah. It, it, it's I mean, got a great vision. You could probably take this one down and trust this person somewhat and move the bond, you know, trust and verify. Uh, but like to like make a text amendment of this, it's just causing yourselves trouble. Okay, that's all over it. You know. it's the problem. Yes, it does. I mean, yeah. that's and that's the thing is when we start listing up all these kinds of conditions, that's what goes to my mind. Well, that's a special problem. You guys did this back door. And the door. state's definition of ag excludes the extraction of gravel. It's not a, it's not considered agriculture. It may facilitate it, but you know, demolishing a building to facilitate what you're going to do next doesn't mean you're exempt from you know, the building code. It's right. not an output or an input. Right. It's, right. it's not, you know, it's yeah, a tail wagging the dog. Right. It's not, there's all kinds of ways you can apply this. Exactly. Okay. There's, there's, there's a path forward. It's just a matter of if it gets them far enough away from the ag, from the gravel rags that they're comfortable. Well, they, they sounded to me they wanted no bond, no nothing. It's just like, let us go do it. I'm not, yeah, I mean, it's an and interesting it's like, question about that. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking about it again in another meeting. We have anything in correspondence at all? Other than your books for your webinar. Yes, we do. We got up. the books, but we didn't get a phone number to for a login. You didn't get a login? No. We had, um registered everyone by their email. I'll have, her, a I'll have her check out what that. Call to, okay. Joy, sure you have that at the book. Yeah. Did you get one? Looking right. I mean, I have, I'm trying to say I have the, I have all the emails for the public consulting. No, no it would have come from the Connecticut bar, probably. Yeah, no, I didn't get an email from them. Mm -hmm. All right, but I'll have to get in. I'll have her call and let you know yeah, what the okay. status is. They may not last time that, them yet. Right. It was like uh, something came and it was click on that other thing. You could go in, yeah. but I didn't get it. Yeah, they may the not point. have sent them yet. Oh, no, I know they went out because I got mine. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Excellent. You did not. Look up mine. Um, on a business meeting, uh, I don't think it's very productive for us to kind of cover this stuff without the rest of the, our members here. So we'll, we'll push that off to uh, another meeting talking about our. Uh, you kind of clear training. Um, we have no need for executive session, so we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. It's 8.32 p.m. Is there a, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, we are adjourned. 32. Very well. <laughs> Bye, Peg.